I just finished this book called How to Eat to Live by Elijah Muhammad, who is a religious leader, specifically um, a religious leader of Islam, uh, who was very prevalent during the civil rights era movement. And in the book, he talked about a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that I agree with, a lot of stuff that maybe I feel like I might have to do my own research on. But in general, it was a great book. It was a powerful book. And um, you know, a couple of things that he spoke on was about the quality of the food that we eat and how it can affect our appearance by making us, of course, either overweight or too obese or making us malnourished or even making us appear older, um, you know, especially like alcohol and smoking. Those can have great effects on our health and um, even just our appearance because a lot of those things can deteriorate our skin or our teeth or, you know, the inside of our bodies over time. And, you know, it's just kind of one thing that many people might be blind to or they do know the um, the risks and the detriments that come to it. But they are, are so, I don't know, I guess blinded by their own desires that they are willing to jeopardize their health. And, you know, of course, that's just like something I kind of already knew because a lot of the eating habits that were promoted were habits that I kind of already followed or I have been following for the past what two years or you know year or so now um when it came to, when it comes to my eating but one thing he mentioned a lot one thing he mentioned a lot throughout the book was eating um one meal a day with nothing in between so you can have water you can have coffee but no like fruit or candies or any type of snack. So he would recommend this due to the effects it would have by clearing out every bit of, you know, uh, toxins in your body. So by allowing whatever food you ate in the past meal, completely going through your system without eating, will allow just for everything to be filtered out um, in a much more like better way. This, I'd say it's very interesting. So personally, I think at least, at the very least two meals a day. Honestly, I don't think three meals or four meals or anything more than that is necessary um, when it comes to eating. I think most people can definitely strive off of just eating two good meals a day, especially food that is incredibly um, nutritious and very uh, dense in proteins and all the other you know minerals that you need and of course making sure you drink water and but with the one meal a day that's that I don't know to me it seems extreme but it could possibly work so with my with my experience with eating um there was a point in time where I was I felt completely fine by eating just one good meal but before that, I had eaten like a fruit or some fruit in the morning. And then after the, the meal in the evening, I ate like, you know, maybe some more fruit or so I snacked on a little bit of something. But it wasn't just that one meal specifically that, that I had the entire day. So I don't know how sustainable that realistically is, but it could be something that's possibly worked up to since basically your hunger is practically just a response to the... Um, to you feeding it. So let's say you wake up at 8 a.m. and then at 8.30 you get hungry. That's because you're so used to feeding yourself at that time. And so it's basically just a response your body is giving due to you um, having those those habits. But when you, you can train your body basically to eat at specific times of the day, depending on, you know, when you are trying to eat, right? So when it comes to intermittent fasting, I think he even uh, recommends intermittent fasting. He basically just says, um, you know, just make sure you drink your water, but don't ingest any food whatsoever until, you know, it's time for your meal. And he even recommends not eating every other day, like eating one meal every other day or every two days or every three days. Which again, like, you know, that's something, that's something you know, someone would have to try themselves just to make sure 
they're not causing any type of harm. But there are also a lot of restrictions on the specific foods to eat. So one, of course, was pork. Pork, swine, hog, same thing. The pig, basically, right? That's, of course, the main restriction to not eat or to consume or to even touch within the um, Islamic religion since the pig is such a filthy animal. Um, filthy, has no type of control or shyness, and will just eat, 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 and continue to eat, eat itself to death, having no restraint whatsoever. And what I found interesting is that people kind of do this. People are capable of these actions. In nature, most animals do not eat until they're full. Most animals will eat, they'll eat from their bowl, even pets. Pets will eat from their bowl, cats, dogs, they'll eat from however much food you gave them. And then sometimes they might not finish it because maybe you gave them too much. And then they'll go on about the rest of their day. If you leave out food for a stray cat, it'll only eat some of the food. Or maybe it might take the food to feed some other stray cats, but it's not going to eat the entire like bowl or however. Unless, you, of course, you're portioning everything correctly. A wolf or, or a stray dog, they will not completely devour whatever meal is in front of them when they know they are completely satiated and full. But for whatever reason, human beings are capable of these types of actions. We are capable of just, you know, consuming food without it having it go through our system completely and properly. And you can see this in people, you know, people that are obese or overweight and, you know, people that you might see always snacking on something. And of course, there might be some people who have some type of illness or deficiencies where their body doesn't process the proteins or the nutrients and the food properly, but that's like a rare case. But most people who are always eating are going to be overweight and are going to have health problems. And they're wearing down their stomach, which is another thing that he mentioned. When it comes to frequent eating, you are wearing down your stomach and your bowels and all your intestines because you're making them work overtime, basically all the time, by always putting something into your body. And so you kind of need your bowels to, to rest. And this is kind of one thing I noticed too. So when I'm not eating, when I'm in a fasted state, I feel that I have a lot more mental clarity. I'm a lot more focused on things. And then when I start eating, I kind of get like the feeling of fullness and whatnot. And what's interesting about not eating as much, not eating as frequent meals a day, is that when you do eat, you will tend to eat less because you will get full faster. And then another thing about not eating as frequently is that you don't get as hungry, basically. So the more you eat, the more hungry you get because your body's always going to kind of want to crave that stimulation. And another thing when it comes to constantly eating, people who constantly eat all the time, most of the food that they eat is not nutrient dense enough in order to fully satiate them. So they can go to the store, they can get like some microwavable meal or something like that and it won't have enough uh, protein or fats or you know whatever other vitamins in it in order for them to feel satiated, to actually feel the real feeling of full. So therefore they have to replace it with so many other types of things um, you know, throughout the day, which causes a lot of weight gain, uh, causes obesity. And so that's just kind of why, you know, people in general will become fat because the foods that they eat on a day-to-day -day basis do not actually satiate them enough, nor do they probably have enough physical activity in order to process all the foods that they're eating. And then of course, with them eating so much, they're gonna get hungry more often. And they're going to respond to that, you know, that hunger stimulants or that hunger um, craving a lot more often. For me, the most interesting piece of information within the book was relating to consuming meat. So of course, like I mentioned earlier, the consumption of pork, swine, it's very sinful. And, you know, again, it's a filthy meat. It's supposed to be avoided, you know, almost at, nearly at all costs. Like, you're not even supposed to smell it. But when it came to meat, like chicken, beef, lamb, all the meats that I usually eat, he was saying that it is actually not good for prolonging our lives and that we should avoid it. We can eat it. We should avoid it. But 
it's not like a sinful thing or anything like that. And that we are also meant to almost purely consume fruits and vegetables. That that was that was very interesting. And then again, he says in the book that he also eats meat. So, you know, I'm not sure if it's like a, you can eat meat, but not too frequently because, you know, it might, you know, destroy your body or something like that. And he was saying not to eat meat because they're very rough on our intestines um, or, you know, just our uh, our internal organs and our uh, bowel movements and systems so that you should try and avoid eating meat. Um, but you can eat animal byproducts such as like, you know, grass fed butter, cheese. He specifically said cream cheese is better than the rest of the cheese, um, eggs. And then uh, he mentioned you can eat fish, but you can't eat any fish that can grow over to 50 pounds. So anything under 50 pounds is fine. And then don't eat food like uh, shrimps. Uh, sea urchins, eels, scallops, um, I guess any of the, you could say like the bugs or the insects of the sea, because they're like scavengers, right? And then he was saying all of the big fish that people might eat are like beasts that we're supposed to avoid. But it was just very interesting um, just seeing all the stuff, um, you know, he stated in the book. And not only did it talk about just um food options and what you should be eating or how you should be eating or food habits but he also kind of talked about um more of like the islamic faith and how a lot of christian beliefs or beliefs might um conflict with the islamic faith such as for one um you know just the consumption of pork right uh, pork was something mentioned a lot in this book which kind of makes sense and so Christians usually they will they will eat pork, um, although in the Bible it says you know that the the consumption of swine is a sinful act, and that's a similarity that the um, that the Quran and the Bible both share. But for whatever reason, in you know the the supporters of the other religion, Christianity, tend to go back on that rule. So I don't know if it's something that that they they are blatantly disobeying or if it's a rule that they don't uh know or that they're not aware of so therefore that's why they're you know eating pig um there is like so many other things especially alcohol it is strictly prohibited in the uh the faith of islam to drink any type of alcohol whatsoever but in the bible it says that alcohol is okay to consume to consume as long as you don't like become drunk basically. But what I loved about the book the most was just the fact that, you know, somebody had this type of knowledge and insight when it came to food and how food correlates with our health and just, you know, even our mental health, not just our physical health, such like a long time ago, technically, you know, it maybe wasn't that long ago, but in terms of before I was born and before even my parents came into this world, that somebody already had just that type of information and that know-how on how we should be interacting with food and how we should be, you know, using food to actually support our health, right? Because again, the, the, the title of the book is How to Eat to Live, right? A lot of people don't eat to live. A lot of people just kind of live and they eat. They don't allow the food that they consume to actually support themselves from day to day. Um, you know, whether that be they just eat way too much or sometimes some people eat way too little. There are people who might be anorexic and then they eat foods that aren't, you know, going to support any type of muscle growth or any type of weight, weight gain in a uh, positive sense. And then there are people who are malnutrition because of the types of food they eat. Just even think of all of the kids, at least here in the West, in America, just think of all of the kids that possibly might be malnutritious due to the, like, just the horrible food options and the horrible food quality within the public school system of, uh, of, their, of their lunches and their breakfasts that are given to them. Think about just the amount of water the average, like, child in elementary school might drink on day-to-day. They might be drinking like little to none. Um, 
you know, all, all and just any type of food. Like the average morning for like some type of, uh, you know, 10 year old or eight year old might be getting like one of those powdered donuts at the, uh, the school cafeteria in the morning once they get off their bus. Or they might even forego eating um, lunch because they find the food so like repulsive and disgusting. And, you know, these are young kids that are in their development and they're practically being poisoned or misled into different ways, you know, in, in ways of eating. And if they are eating throughout the day, they're not eating food that is clean. They're not eating food that is actually going to support their growth. They're probably eating like hot chips. They're drinking like Gatorade or some type of like, you know, processed like fruit juice or something like that with like artificial flavors. You know, maybe they're ordering food to the school. Like in, when, I, when I was in high school, people would order food to the school. But what they would order, it's not like anybody's trying to order like Chipotle or, or a salad. They're ordering like wings, bro. They're ordering like pizza sometimes. They're ordering like McDonald's. They're, they're order, they're, 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 they are killing themselves, basically. People now, when it comes to food, most people are killing themselves, whether they have the knowledge or not. Because sometimes... People don't have the willpower to make the actual proper changes when it comes to their health. Because again, those changes are hard. Those changes are difficult. It's it's hard to try and go and do the research to make sure you're eating all the right exact foods for your body. It's hard to try and do the research to make sure, you know, whatever you're putting in your body is like, you know, the purest thing. It's hard to actually change up your diet, especially when you're just so used to eating certain foods right there 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 are foods that are literally addictive to us because just of like we either grew up on them eating them all the time or we just got hooked one time just eating it like mcdonald's like i think they literally put chemicals in the food in the fast food in order for you to keep going there over and over again just so you can eat it even chinese food just random chinese food um like people have said that in new york um, that the Chinese food in New York, that they put chemicals in it to make you want it more, to make you keep, come back and keep going, and that the food in actuality doesn't even taste that good. So it's like if you cook your own food, it's not going to taste as good as that, like, you know, that Chinese food store down the street or the McDonald's or the Burger King is going to taste like slightly a little, you know, a little off. But that's why we have to, you know, like, know now to stop getting those things right. <laughs> Even, bro, even when when I am driving through this, like, you know, uh, a street or a road where there's a bunch of restaurant changes, chains, the roads smell like salt. The roads smell like the food. They, like, they're literally emitting the air of the restaurants into, like, the air. So then people who are smelling the salt in the air can end up, like, wanting to eat the food. Like, we live in such a commercialized world where they are attacking our health. They're attacking our, our physical abilities. They are attacking our, our mental stability. They're attacking everything, right? They're attacking our own self-security in order to, to just gain a lot more wealth and just a lot more power over us. And that's something we have to watch out, watch out for. That's something we have to be careful of, right? And, and the, first, the first step is taking care of your health and you will realize all the lies that are, you know, are being fed to you, to you and to your families and to your children and brothers and sisters, whatever, and to your friends. I, mean, I might've already said friends, but you know, that's about all I had to say. This last part was a little mini rant. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. So yeah, see you guys in the next video. Excuse me, close this, uh, jump quiet, I think. 18, 19. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> you watching that dude train his legs.